Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to Mecha Rewatch. And this time we're going to be going over episodes four and five of Gundam Wing. I'm Kosick, and with me, as always, is my co host, Lon. Hi. And, uh, yeah, there's stuff happen. Lots of. Yeah, stuff ooh, so much happened. exposition. So so much explanation and exposition of what's actually going on. Not that any of it makes sense yet, but it's there now. So before we go too far into the meat and potatoes of these two exposition heavy episodes, it's uh, really it's it's really episode five that's yeah super yeah uh, four four is just a kind of good episode. Yeah, four is not too bad. Five five is like. Kind four of, is a lot of character background. Yeah, four yeah. is a lot of this is who these characters are. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of characters, there are two voice actors that I neglected to mention last episode, and I figured I'd mention their voice actors here uh, at the beginning of this one. And we're going to start with Troa's voice actor, which is Kirby Morrow. And Kirby Morrow has done a lot of the usual stuff that like Ocean Group has done. He's He was in Death Note as Teru Mikari. He he was in uh, Inuyasha as Mido, uh, Midoku. He was in Vision of Escaflaune. Uh, he was actually the main character in Vision of Escaflaune. Oh, okay, that's he, fun. Uh, well, the main male lead character, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't in Atomi. He <laughs> wasn't in Atomi. <laughs> I, w- I was like, wow, it's range. <laughs> <laughs> he was also in Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects as Johnny Storm. Ooh, okay. That's yep, awesome. yep. And then, yeah, a lot of the usual stuff, Dragon Ball, that kind of thing. Um, Ketra's voice actor, you are guaranteed to recognize for a variety of reasons. He was Teen Gohan in DBZ. Yeah, okay. He is also, and we're going to hear him a lot. He's in a lot of Gundam stuff. We're going to yeah. hear him a lot over the course of... A lot of these people are in a lot of Gundam stuff, but he... Brad Swale... Is Amuro Ray? Yep. Um, he's a, he's he's ag- it's weird because um, he's actually got a lot a lot of main character roles, and yeah. I think Ketra is like he gets more screen time later, a lot more screen time later, but he's still not the- Just barely in the show. Yeah. Um, um. But yeah, he. I mean, he does a he does good work. You can see why he gets a lot of these main roles, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you've, if you've See DBC, yeah, he's really good at go. Yes, Gohan. Yeah. Um, well, he's also he's uh for those of you who may have seen this, I, it's not as popular as a lot of the other stuff that was in Shonen Jump, uh, at least at the time that I read it. But uh, uh, Hikaru no Go, he's actually he's Sai Fujiwara. Okay. Um, and that he's Light Yagami. Um, so he eats a potato chip. <laughs> Does eat a potato chip. He's also the main character for Gun- Mobile Suit Gundam Double O. He's Setsuna F. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, he's Ali the super fan from the Ratchet and Clank movie. Yeah. Um, he's also in World uh, World Trigger. A lot of the, uh, Ocean, I think, did the dub for World Trigger. Okay. Um, as well, which is good anime. If you haven't watched it, I recommend it. Um, but notably, he's also Rock from Black Lagoon. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, you, I, you when, when you actually yeah. start thinking about it, yeah. You, it was the same thing when you said Gohan. I was like, oh, yeah, it sounds yeah, the same. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, he's done a lot of main character stuff. Uh, yeah. And, good, and, and a good V8. You good can good see V8. that they they cast him in this for future main character-ness. Because right now, he's not. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> uh, sure. Clearly, like, you can have a lot of lives later. <laughs> yeah, and he will become far more important later. Going back to Gundam Wing, we have our opening in blurb and then we have Zex on a plane um, and he is talking to we we get a kind of intercut back and forth here between Zex and well frankly one of his lads but even though she's Mm. not a lad she's not a lad yet technically technically she's going to become the the laddest of lads she's going to become basically the like Second in command of the yeah, lads. she's going to become prime lad, but not yeah. yet. Um, um, and that's Lucrezia Noin. Yeah, the best character. Yeah, who can only sometimes be bothered to put on a uniform. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, they're setting up. So Noin 
Noyne is at the Vic- Lake Victoria base where they do a lot of yeah. their training. But it's also where, and we hear it mentioned multiple times, yes. not just here, but just throughout the whole episode, that these new Taurus suits that Oz has developed yeah. are being shipped from this base. And they are specifically space suits. Mm-hmm. One presumes to go oppress the colonies with. Uh, uh, presum- that's presumably presumably why you would yeah. need a space suit. Yes, presumably. Um, and Noin is training the pilots who will be flying those Taurus yeah, suits. Yeah, and they're not, they're not super great. No. They, they have these little chairs. They fly around. They bump into each other. She gets mad. She, she doesn't seem like a great instructor, to be honest. Not, no. Not, not because they're not very good, but because, like, she just kind of yells at them. Yeah. In the next scene, she'll slap one like it's... Mm-hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't have her in an instructor role. That doesn't seem like she does it seem fits to her. come more into her own when she's no longer doing instructor role yeah. stuff. Yeah, she she's very just you know she's a good mech pilot, but I don't I don't think she's got the chops to be a flight instructor. Yeah. Now then, like we cut very briefly to Wu Fei, yeah, standing like contemplative at the top of a cliff. And says nothing as he hops on his motorcycle and rides straight down the cliff. Yep. Like, we're talking, this is like, it's not a straight drop, but this is like, the the, the edge of the, like, cl- it, it's still a cliff. Yeah. It, we're talking, like, it's, almost it's a, 90 degrees. It's a very evil Knievel stunt, which will be relevant later. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. <laughs> he's still, I mean, he's still not... And we're gonna see he's not as physically capable as he was. Yeah. It also, also, it's it's worth noting because we're talking positively about him very quickly. We hate Wu Fei. He's the worst. Uh, and we'll continue. In to this be episode like, will show us why he's the worst. He he is the worst even when we get to the movie. Yeah. He's just an awful person. Um, yeah. Um, not that not that anybody in this show is really a good person except right. maybe. Relina, even that, like, Relina's frequently like incompetent, but not like yeah, a she's bad not, person. No, not um, a bad person, but definitely. It, it's one of the things, especially at the beginning of this show. This show does not start out with a particularly clear good guy bad guy dynamic. Like yeah. the intro tells us that the colonies are being oppressed by Earth, so that kind of sets up the colonies as the good guys. But then it's hard to sympathize with the guys who come down in the invincible mechs and just start killing people. Mm-hmm. So they're not really... And, and Hero is, like, a jerk. So, you know, it's hard to sympathize with him at well, the start. And it's interesting, because when we get to Gundam Double O, and also when we get to... Because uh, notably, the uh, I'll, I'll spoil it now, because it's not really much of a spoiler, but the series we plan on doing after this one, directly after this one, is Out Noah Zero. Yeah, which is like this show, but in reverse. It, um, yeah. Where the, really the, the Martians... They're Martians in that case instead of colonists, but they're they're the bad guys. Uh, and, 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 and that show starts with a very clear good guy, bad guy dynamic that then changes over the course of the show as it turns out that there are plots and things. This show is kind of the opposite. Mm-hmm. You can't really tell who the good guy is supposed to be. And over the course of these episodes, actually, we're yeah. going to get a lot more of, okay, these are the bad guys. Well, and this is this sort of dichotomy here is 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 it's also a little more cut and dried in what many consider to be kind of a spiritual remake of this, which is Gundam Double O. Yes. Because it's a very similar concept. We'll, it is. We'll, we'll get to that more when we um, actually get to Gundam Double. But yeah, because so, so far, again, we've kind of been set up as the colonies versus Earth. And nobody's really the good guy. They're just fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, again, we clearly have protagonists of the show. Yeah. But not necessarily good guys. Right. So we're going to cut back to uh, Zex landing, essentially. Yes. And... Um, Noin is at the airport, yeah. I guess. Well, the the tarmac, really, at the edge of the tarmac. Well, first we get their graduation ceremony. Yeah, which is at the edge of the tarmac. Yeah, yeah. This, She's, this like, is what I'm talking about. Graduating yeah. these guys from, again, as, based on how incompetent they were in the previous scene, basic flight. 
Um, but they are now part of the elite specials. They are specials. now part of the elite specials. Um, presumably because there are no non-elite mech pilots. That's just not a thing. If you're a mech pilot, you're in the elite. That's how that works. Even though all Even you've though done is graduate, basically. Alliance, there are alliance mech pilots, and we will find this out well, later. Maybe they're elite, too. I guess, yeah. They never yeah. say they're not, so that's yeah. fair. We cut to Noin... Well, not cut, but we see Noin, like, l- kind of glance longingly up at Zex's plane. She does that a lot. It, this was actually more apparent in the scene. She leaned really close to that monitor. It was a oh, very yeah. weird way... So, so they have these... Mm-hmm wall video monitors that they use to communicate with yeah. each other because this was made before the era of, of, of nowadays it would be a cell phone right but but it's not it's very mm-hmm. like 2001 a space odyssey there is a a yeah. screen on a wall and she like puts her hands on either side of it and leans leans way. towards it to the point of like putting her nose up to it it's a very strange way to interact with a video monitor it's mm-hmm. it's in some ways, it's very longing. In other ways, it's how your grandmother interacts with FaceTime. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So they're um, on the tarmac. Zex shows up. And then we cut to the loneliest rave. Yeah, we do. And this <laughs> scene is awkward. It is It is so the two awkward. of them in it is some Noin, sort of The two bar. of them being Noin and Zex. Yeah, it, Zo- Noin and Zex. Zoin and Nex. Uh, oh, that's their names now. Yeah. Uh, they are the lights are flashing like multicolored disco, but they are not enjoying themselves. They are having this very stilted conversation. Like why they chose to go to this bar. We can presume it's the officers' well, it, club. It is. It's the O club. It, um, Which cause, what a cause hell of an O. Notably, Zex remarks upon the weird lighting and everything. He says, "This yeah. is kind of an interesting place you have here on base." And she's like, "Yeah, it's because all the like all these guys are like basically these these are all like you know basically college age kids." Yeah. Getting, and going into officer I've, school, I've been a college kid. I still wouldn't have had. I wouldn't have gone to this bar. No, uh, it's, no. I too but, have been a college kid. But yes, so they are having a like professional adult conversation at an empty rave. It's, at an empty rave, and notably, it's like a it's 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 literally like a very stilted version of like two classmates catching up. After yeah, they they're, been... they're catching up, but there's no, yeah. like, fondness in it. No, there's it's just it's... A, a very flat, like, Lieutenant Zex, just call me Zex. And then, and then at the end, we play Sabersies. Oh, this is also, I forgot, um, in the vid call, this is when we also hear Zex's uh, moniker. Yes, yes. The Lightning Count. Yeah, this is the first time he gets called the Lightning Count, this is which his, is fun. This is this Char clone's version of being called the Red Comet. Yeah, Comet. this is his version of being called the Red Comet. He's the Lightning Count. Sure, whatever. Uh, cool, cool. It's, cool it's not Nama bad. Gare. It's not bad. Red Comet's yeah. better. Uh, Red Comet is better. It, Red Comet has better reasoning behind it. Yeah. Um, like, they never really mention why he's called the Lightning he's Count. He's fast. And he's, it's like, yeah. But not in a way that's like evocative of anything. Yeah, it's just it, a very it, basic. He's not three non-air. times faster than a normal Zaku. No, he's not. It, but yeah, there's there's no like, oh, he's so fast people think he's lightning or something like. No, it just they just call him lightning cat. Yeah. Um but yeah, this is where we get who who does Zex then Zex talks to somebody on the phone in he this He talks scene. to Otto. Talks to Otto. Okay. One of one of the longest lasting lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah one of, but he, he has a conversation with Otto, and wha- he, he is on the phone, having this conversation with Otto. And because of the positioning of the phone next to the bar, he has to stand, like... Well, he has to turn his back. They're sitting on bar stools. Well, he's not. He's on that, like, lounge thing. Like but then the- he gets up to go to the phone. Um, and the way the phone is positioned, it's, like, near Noin's bar stool, with his back turned to her. And she's just, like... Tapping her saber against his repeat because they're both in uniform, yeah, right. Um, and they're both under arms, presumably because there's a, mm-hmm. a, a, theoretically a war on. Um, so they have their their ceremonial sabers because uh, they're cavalry, right? Uh, that mm-hmm. actually that totally makes no, sense. Yeah, they're that, cavalry. That, that tracks that um, mech officers that, that would have sabers. Yeah. that they would have sabers. Um, but yeah, she's just tapping the tip of her saber against his, and this goes on. For a while. This is not like a cute little thing at the end of the scene. Well, it, There's like a full minute of her 
Again, yes. they're like playing footsies, but not with their feet, with the well, tips of their and, sabers. And also, because like Zex kind of seems a little weirded out by this. Yeah, he kind of pauses he's when he not, hears the clinking and is like, what the fuck are you yeah, doing? He's <laughs> not playing back. Yeah. She's just like, yeah, but playing footsies may have been overselling it because they're not mutually engaged in some kind of flirtation. She's just like, he he he, I'm going to tap your saber repeatedly with my saber, and I think now, this is fun. Well, and you went to a, a J. Rotsi school. I sure you, did. You, you I had did J. Rotsi for four years, and we did have sabers. Yeah. Did, did, did you ever do that? Um, not, not so awkwardly. <laughs> I, I would argue that. that I am awed least twice as good at flirting as Lucrezia Noin is. Well, um, I mean, yeah. But well, also, like, twice zero is zero. So, yeah, Le you Lucrezia know. Noin is not... Frankly, none of these characters. <laughs> except for Ketra and Troa. <laughs> well, Ketra, Ketra and Troa have an epic romance going right now. We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, we will. Uh, but, yeah, it's just... So many interactions between these characters are very strange, but also... They're strange in a way that people are sometimes mm -hmm. strange with each other. It's it's not, like, unbelievably strange. Mm -hmm. It's just remarkable that, that they put that in a show. And notably, part of this conversation is also that is exposits on Noin's philosophy as an officer. Oh, yeah, they have this lengthy conversation. Of, she thinks that no one should ever, no one under her command is ever going to die. Um, and Which is Zex kind of gives her take. a wake-up call of, like, my men have already died. That happens. Like, military operations involve... And this is a lesson that you'll get in, in like, basic officer training school, mm -hmm. right? Of, like, you, one of the jobs you have is to order men to their deaths. That's just a fact. You don't want to do it pointlessly or needlessly, but men under your command will die. People die when they that's, get killed. It, it, war is like that, yeah. right? The the idea that you're going to go through it like some kind of pro XCOM player where nobody ever dies is like ridiculous, mm -hmm. right? Um, but but she thinks that her her men will never die, and, and Zex gives her like a, a wake up call, right? It's like that's not how this works and she argues back she says that every death under her command is like a miscalculation and like yep. I mean sure I, I guess but also like but yeah. you're about to miscalculate a lot yeah cut to knowing miscalculating <laughs> yeah correct uh, cut um, to Wufei has infiltrated their base placed bombs in the entire barracks and blows the whole thing up yeah, he doesn't even go in with the mech. He just literally bombs yeah, their barracks, like, Beirut just, style. We can presume that the barracks was maybe less guarded than the mechs. Maybe it's, that's I mean, why he was able a, to do it's that. It's training barracks, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's... Because I, I presume that Wufei would have gone for the mechs if he could. Mm -hmm. um, this is funny for a thing that Wufei will get to later, but, like... Wufei is... One of the things about Wufei's character is he's obsessed with, like, fighting an equal opponent. Yeah, he's very much the... But like, also, he he sure is willing to blow up all the pilots in their beds. Um, mm -hmm. Which, I don't know, doesn't seem super consistent with I will seek my equal number in battle. It's pragmatic for someone who is ostensibly a battle judge. It's good tactics. It's well, good tactics, it's, it's but it's not... It's arguably a war crime, but uh, bullying But it's that. also not, um, like... It's weirdly out of character for Wu Fei. I guess it's not really a war crime. It's just a thing that people frown upon. Um, yeah. The the SAS famously in World War Two got like kind of chewed out for like killing pilots. They were supposed to blow up material. Um, yeah. The SA yeah the uh, the SAS notably in North Africa. Like, yeah, in North Africa. The original they, SAS. Yeah. Now now notably <laughs> didn't necessarily stop them from doing it, but but there was a bit of a like this is not the way that we want to be operating. We're not... Like, there's a difference between mm -hmm. sabotage and assassination. Um, and Wufei doesn't seem to care. Uh, but again, also, <laughs> would like to see his equal number in battle. Uh, I don't know, could have been one of those guys. You'll never find out. Yeah, uh, he blew all of them up, Wufei. Sure did. They send... So Noin scrambles, not to her mobile suit, but scrambles to the command center first. Yeah, in like a tank top. In a tank uh, top and, and slacks, yeah. Sure, but... Also, like, they say something about, like, it's going to be 30 minutes She's got her before. officer uniform pants on, I think. She, or maybe she sleeps in those. Yeah, um, I mean, or maybe, they were, maybe, maybe those are the only pants she had. Yeah. She's like, look, I don't have time to put on a jacket and my medals, but I am going to wear pants. Uh, yeah, which didn't have time fair. to grab the saber. 
Right, which is yeah. which is yeah, which is fair. fair. I would also fair. throw throw pants on. I would also run to my mech. Presumably, because yeah, that's where she runs after this. Because it would be one thing if she took command and control from this moment, from that spot. Yeah, she does, but know. but she runs to the command center, says some very ob like states obvious things that are obvious. Right, that the, the person on duty could have done. Yeah, uh, and then pers- then goes to her Mac. Right. Well, and and notably, she has. It's funny because I don't think we. Well, no, we see her in this mech later on. Because yep. this is her, like, Ace Custom Ares. Yeah. It gets, it's, they recover it. Um, <laughs> spoilers, she's going to lose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, so, yeah, there, there's a fair bit of action that actually happens. Yeah, this, she, this, she, is, she, this uh, is a good bit. She chases she, Wufei on his yeah. motorcycle. Yep. Um, she is thinking... We see that Noin is a very intelligent combatant. Mm-hmm. She is aware that Wufei... Well, she doesn't know he's Wufei, but th- this saboteur is probably headed back towards the Gundam. Right mm-hmm. now, she doesn't know that he's the Gundam pilot. She presumably thinks that the Gundam will be piloted when she gets there. That, that mm-hmm. she's essentially being led into a trap. Yeah. Um, but also, she thinks that she can win because she's going to have well, her men bring up the space space laser space yeah, cannon space laser they call space it. laser. Yeah. Which the comment is is overheats when fired in atmosphere, uh, but it will work. Um, which is interesting because that's not how heat works in space. Yeah, it should be easier to dissipate heat in atmosphere. That, that's irrelevant. I mean, it's yeah. designed for atmosphere. It doesn't. It doesn't yeah. have any cooling fins. It's. It's. Yeah. Sure. Whatever. Sure. But so yeah, she, she's basically. I'm being led into a trap, but it'll draw the Gundam out, and then you can shoot it with the space laser. That sounds like a great plan. Mm-hmm. In fact, it is a great plan because it it effing works. Uh, she she shoots at Lufe, knocks him off his motorcycle, but he gets to his. Gundam, and starts like, and we start to get a it hint up. at Wu Fei's views towards women. We sure do, cause she 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 kind of has him dead to rights, and he makes a comment of like, well, he says because they're like having a conversation. He's like, you're kind of a know it all, and then she shoots at him, knocks him off the motorcycle. So it doesn't kill him with her giant auto cannon, but sure, whatever. Um, yeah. And then he says, like, "Oh, he hears her voice and says, oh, 'Oh, you're a, you're a woman. That explains a lot, or something to that effect.' Yeah, something he's to a, that effect. He's a jerk. Well, well, it's getting worse. Um, it, it, it only yeah, it, goes it only gets worse from here. downhill. From uh, so um, then he kicks the bag up, which is filled with flashbangs. Right. He he like flashes her sensors or whatever so that mm-hmm. he can run to his mech. Sure, he gets in his mech and then she, again, the plan works. They bring up the space laser, he's powering up his mech, they have a targeting solution on his engines, and then she says, don't, don't shoot. shoot. And they say why? And they say why? And that moment of hesitation is enough for her two men to be killed by the Gundam. Uh, um, after Wu Fei says the line, "Cause she's a woman." That's right. He does. He yeah. They say why, and he says, "Cause she's a woman," which is okay. I think we're. I think at some point we're gonna find out that the reason she said not to fire is because he's a kid. Yeah. But that's a stupid... He just killed so many people. He's an enemy combatant. He's yeah. clear... An illegal combatant, arguably, but an enemy combatant nonetheless. Well, and clearly the pilot of the Gundam, which is... has You you already know that this Gundam in particular has yeah. wiped out multiple bases. Right, right. It's just shoot. It's just shoot. But anyway, yeah. Um, no, they... Uh, uh, her miscalculation, in her own words, uh, causes her two men to be killed. Um, and then she gets shot down. And then she, but not killed. Not killed. Um, Wu Fei, yeah, sh- shoots her down, but has other things to do with his time rather than mm-hmm. finish her off. So I, we kind of get this from a couple of the Gundam pilots that they're not overly keen on finishing off opponents. Um, now, again, he just murdered a bunch of pilots. I don't know why he would have qualms about it. This well, one, I think it's Aww. it's it, it, it's weird because again, that's why the pilots. Because we'll find out kind of why he did that later, which yeah. is that he doesn't see Noin as like a even worth killing kind of right. thing. But again, he just blew up a barracks, yeah. so and killed two other mooks. Yeah, with hap- well, so we can presume he doesn't he doesn't mind killing people. He just doesn't 
like his attack that destroyed their mechs also killed them. Fair enough. Okay, yeah, that, right. That makes sense. Um, yeah, sure, sure. His attack that disabled her did not kill her, and he doesn't bother to finish her. Again, he has other things to do, um, as we're gonna see in a few seconds. He 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 has other activities that he's going to be engaged in. It's gonna cut from this to uh, the Zex at the hangar. Yes, and they are arguing. Zex is saying, "Don't, don't move the um, don't. What are the, they called? The space, the Tauruses, the Tauruses right? Don't. don't move. They're putting the Tauruses on planes to evacuate them. Yeah, and he's because saying, they think that this yeah. Gundam pilot is after the Tauruses. Um, and Zex says, "Don't move them. He's not coming here. I can tell what he's doing. Like, like he has made his attack and it." Zex, again, a very intelligent combatant, is like, this is guerrilla warfare. He has made... He is not trying to engage us directly. He, made it, yeah. he is going to fade away. He is he, not coming yeah, here yeah. to finish the job. He, he, he can't. Has, he has made his hit. Now he's going to fade. Right. Keep them in the base. Yeah, keep them in the base. Because, and it makes sense, because he has ranged weapons. We we They know yeah. his mech's capabilities by now, because they've right. seen, they have combat footage of him. Yeah, keep them here where they're defended. Because um, these, these Gundams are notably not invincible. Right. Right. Um, they're very strong, but but Zex in particular knows that they can be damaged. Right. Mm -hmm. he, he fought Kiro Yui and essentially won. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, then they launch one of the planes, and it gets shot down immediately. It gets th shot down specifically by the space laser that Wu Fei has has yeah. taken off of the two yep. dead mm -hmm. uh, pilots. Um, in a in a very like mm -hmm. yeah, you get what you yeah, what's coming to you. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a but yeah, there's a lot of arguing between this officer and Zex, um, which is silly. Military personnel just don't mm -hmm. argue with each other like that. Yeah, Zex is an officer. Should just order the guy to do the thing, and then the guy should do it. Uh, mm -hmm. But he doesn't. He he. Basically, Zex won't move his plane to get out of the way of the other plane. Um, and then the guy is like, fine, go around and launch the plane. If he does, and the plane gets shot down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thus proving Zex was correct, because, I mean, obviously he was correct. He's a named character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we cut to Hito and Duo in a, like, mech repair bay. Yes. Um, and in, in Duo's... Uh, Floating island fortress. Uh, his his outer heaven or mother base, depending on which Metal Gear you want to reference. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I, I, he, I thought it was an aircraft carrier. I I didn't realize until now it wasn't. No, it's just like some kind of rig. That, unclear if it's stationary or mobile. Um, one presumes it would have to be mobile, otherwise the Earth forces would eventually figure track out track him back yeah. to it. Um, you would think. Yeah. You would think. But hey, who knows? Maybe it's just some sort of weird offshore junkyard. Yeah. Um. Um. And uh, they have a bit of a chat about how Hito's mech just doesn't have. He's any parts. He's yeah. trying to do repairs, but he doesn't have any parts. Um. And Duo is like offering him parts, and Hero says, "I don't want anybody touching my mech, or I don't want anybody touching my Gundam." Because he then, offers the services of his whole hangar crew. Yeah, and then Duo says okay and proceeds to jump up and sit on his Gundam. Yeah, uh, I don't which to, you know, <laughs> a very Duo thing to do. Good job, Duo. Um, um, well, and then um, he. This is where he makes his remark. Yeah, he's why he do I says, even bother? He's antisocial. Thinks he's evil, yeah, Knievel. Which we we went back and tried to figure out if he actually says evil, Knievel in Japanese because that seemed like a very odd reference for a Japanese show to make, and he doesn't seem to. It seems that that is a translation choice on the part of the, of the yeah English. The dubs and the subs both had it. Yeah. Um. But so somebody has decided to translate presumably some sort of word for stuntman as evil, Knievel. Uh. Mm -hmm. Sure. Fair enough. Um, Cultural touchstone of the time, evil Knievel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but then, yeah, then yeah. we we and that's pretty much the end of that conversation. And oh, and then we and then we cut to Ketra and Troa being friends. Not quite. Not no. Yet. 
It's not. We're, we're close. Okay. But first, we cut to Rolina begging for death on a beach. Oh yeah, we do briefly. Sorry, I try to forget scenes like this. Uh yes, we cut to Rolina like standing on shore, yelling at the ocean. I'm here, hero, come kill me. And she's not actually begging. She's for not death. actually begging for death. She's just like frustrated that she can't figure out what happened to Hero and where he is. Yeah. Um, her, her crush is gone. And, and, and he said he would kill her, so, so you know, that's what she associates him with. Mm-hmm. Very weird. Like, it, yep. like, I hate to tell you, girl, but if, if he was dating you, it would probably be, like, a problematic relationship. Mm-hmm. Just, just don't. And just then we don't. cut to an expository military conference. <sighs> oh, we do. Yeah, where uh, Vice Minister Dorlin, Relina's father... Um, he is advocating that these attacks are not like a unified yeah, the, action by the, the these colonies. Are, these are the work of terrorists. Yeah, that that they're lone actors who have sent these mechs, which is okay, kind of fair, but also like, I mean, to produce these Gundams, it's not like one guy built them in a garage. No. Uh, maybe maybe one guy. They seem to be able to fix them in a garage. So maybe one guy did build them in a garage. Well, we'll, it's kind of, we'll, and, we'll find out let, if that's yeah, not the case. But yeah, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll find what we'll find out later is that and I, I, there's no reason not to say it now is that each of these there's like a whole team of these very uh, like genius level mech designers yeah. who and. Not independently, they all had a plan together that was part of a larger plan. That won't, that the larger plan we won't even get into until no. the movie, where this is it, it gets extremely convoluted. Yeah, but for right now, but it's basically yeah, the, they build these mechs. Yeah, um, and but yeah, so he's he's advocating that these these are probably lone actors. The the Earth forces are advocating. Well, this is an attack by the colonies. This is our excuse to go in. Yeah, we and have Cassus Bellide. Oppress the colonies, yeah. right? We can send in troops. We can reassert mm-hmm. our control and remove their independence. Um, he says, "No, they're lone actors. The colonies want peace. We should. We should." And like do that. almost no one is listening to him. No one's listening. Well, no one guy's listening to him a lot because he accuses him of being a spy. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> he just starts yelling. He's like, "Your true allegiances are revealed. You're a spy." It's like, well, yeah, he's the ambassador. One, ambassadors are frequently spies. Two, yeah, of course he has sympathies with the place he's the ambassador. Is it from or to? Is he the ambassador to the colonies or the well, ambassador it's from the colonies? Well, interesting, home and everything is on Earth. Right. Well, but ambassadors frequently have homes in the place that they're the ambassador to, so that's not that Yeah, weird. it's fair. Um, but it seems like he's... I don't know. Given what, given how this guy reacts to him, I have always assumed that he's the ambassador to the colonies. I think that's probably right, that correct. He is, he is from Earth and he is the ambassador to to the colonies. He lives in the colonies most of the time because that's where his job is. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he comes down to Earth to, like... Yeah. But then also we'll see him in a colonial meeting later where they kind of treat him like one of theirs. So... I think maybe the people who wrote this show don't totally understand how ambassadors work. I Uh, I mean, that's... (laughs) Probably the case, right? I, he's he's the go between between the colonies and Earth, yeah. and it's unclear which side mm-hmm. he actually is supposed to work for. This guy certainly seems to think he's supposed to work for Earth, but also is a traitor. Uh, um, yeah, and then we cut to after all this because yeah, that's about the that gist meeting of ends. That meeting. That's the gist of that. And we cut to trays in a hot tub. We do. We cut immediately to trays in a hot tub, um, which I mean, you know. Yeah. He's a very attractive man. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and he is discussing uh, things with his... Well, actually, is it a hot tub or is it bubble bath? It might be a bubble bath. I think it's bubble bath. It but based looked... on a comment later, I think it's bubble bath. It's Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, bubble bath, yeah. Uh, but he um, just outdoor bubble bath. Yep, yep, he has an outdoor, a big outdoor bubble bath. I mean, like Roman style, which, you know... 
this guy would be the guy to have yeah, a Roman style no, outdoor it, bubble it bath. Is, it is very much. It's very in character for Trey's. You yeah. see this, and you're like, ah, yes, Trey's being smarmy and rich, smarming <laughs> richly. Yeah, he sure is. Um, um, he also like is conducting official business from his bubble bath. Yeah, with his like attaché secretary slash hit woman. Well, that's a pretty normal relationship yeah, yeah. to have. We, yeah. 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 My His at- dog robber. My, yeah, my attaché slash assassin. Yeah. Um, um, like, like officially, I believe officially in the military, she's like his attaché, mm-hmm. but then also yeah. within the secret plot that Trey's is, is unfolding, Lady she's Un. an assassin. Yeah. Lady Un, uh, who is, well, <laughs> is a character. Uh, and gets even weirder as a character as the series goes on. It's it's funny because there are a lot of parallels between the relationship between Noin and Zex and the relationship between Un and Trez, but in like opposite directions. Well, also the other weird thing with this is I, I feel like I should mention this now because Lady Un, the, her character design, she looks like she's like thirty. She does. She's 20. Yeah. Um, and she's also... I don't know what it is about her character design, but she's the first character in this show to really look evil. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, because Trace is a bad guy, but he's like this sort of haughty upper-class bad guy who's very attractive and Mm -hmm. has Roman bubble baths. So, so he doesn't have that like mm-hmm. sort of classic. He has a different bad guy. He has look. he has the charismatic villain vibe. Right. She's just evil. Like yeah, she's she got just the looks, Saturday morning cartoon villain. Vibe. Yeah. The something about the way her facial expression works and her glasses and and her whole setup. She just looks like a bad guy, and she is. So, good job, I guess. I just realized. I think she has a red uniform too. Now I think she does. Yeah. Her uniform is red. Mm-hmm. Um. But not the same red as, as Zex's, Zex's uniform. No. You, look, the uniform of the day is in question this entire show. Yeah. Um, Z- Zex's red Zex is more... Because Zex wears his bright red uniform. Yeah, like, almost... His is more of, like, a... I mean, his is more evocative of, like, the Char Right, red. and like, he looks like Char. Uh, um, hers is more of a blood red. Honestly, yeah, hers is a dark Which I think is red. also what helps the villain... Yeah, it definitely does make her look more villainous. Um... And then, yeah, we'll see that uh, Trey is whenever we see him in uniform wears blue, which, again, I don't think anybody else does. Mm-hmm. And then Noin and most of the lads wear these, like, green tasseled uniforms. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're pretty consistent. But it is just, like, all of the officers have these wildly differently colored uniforms. And I Oz assume... specifically, like, it's like that. Because yeah. the Alliance uniforms are almost uniformly, like, this kind of tan. Like yes. Almost khaki. Yes. Um, Including the, their officers. Yes, yeah, so I think we can presume that these are Oz uniforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the green is very much an Oz uniform. Yeah, the green definitely is. Um, and, and again, the, the other uniforms that they're wearing are styled on the green ones. Mm-hmm. There's different colors. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... What are they... What's Lady Un's rank? Do we find out? We don't find out. I'm not sure if they're all different ranks, and that yeah. that's what determines the color. I see... Yeah. Or if it's just that Oz says your uniform can be whatever color you want, and if you're named, you get a unique color. Well, well it, but no, no one wears a normal uniform. Yeah, so. no one notably wears the same green uniform that the rest of the lads right. wear. Yeah, yeah, sure does. Um, um, and she's the same rank as Zex, because they're both lieutenants. They are both lieutenants. So, so yeah, it's not a rank thing. Uh, at, who knows? Um... Again, we can presume that all of these uniforms are within their uniform code and that they just are allowed to choose them and most people choose green because it's the one that looks normal. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Anyway, um, we're going to cut back to Duo's Outer Heaven again because yes. Hiro is lifting off. Right. And Duo at first is like... He's extremely impressed. Wow, he managed to fix his mech all by himself. That's incredible. Because oh, we did miss a little bit of Duo in Hiro's conversation. Um, where Hiro gets a mission while he's repairing oh, yes, his he mech. Does, and Duo's he, there. And Duo's like, well, how are you going to do that? You you can't fix this. Like, yeah, You physically you gonna, cannot fix this fast. He's enough. like, I'm going to figure it out. And, and Hiro literally just goes... 
He's well, like, I maybe can't. for you, I'm not you to maybe fail. someone yeah. like you couldn't fix it, but I, I can. But I'm the. He's just a jerk. Yeah. Well, and Duo just goes, "Excuse me for being a mere mortal." Yeah. Which is Duo correct. is is great. Which is correct. Duo is only mortal, mm-hmm. Des- despite his kind of being called the Death Scythe. Um, uh, but yeah, so he's. In a, like remarking in amazement, he's like, "Wow, that's rad! That's super cool that he could and get his do, mech up and running that fast." And we do see Wing Gundam transform into its wing form for transit. Yeah, uh, and then one of his repair crew goes, "We've been had." Yeah, and he, <laughs> he turns, turns around, back. and Gundam Death Scythe has been totally taken apart <laughs> and is missing half its parts. <laughs> And this is this is technically the first betrayal yeah, ding of the show. On the betray- D- we, we we haven't ding. had a counter ding in a while. This no, is, this, this is, is this and, is and this is an auspicious one. Oh, uh, it sure is. Uh, but yeah, betrayal counter, up betrayal by counter one. up by one. Um, and yeah, he he stole parts from Death Scythe. Again, a duo needs to have his dudes guard his mech or something. I, I don't, oh boy, I don't know if he'd want. He'd just lose them all because he would all like, just be murdered. Yeah, maybe he is like, look, the guy could take whatever he wants, so I guess we won't well, try to he, stop him. He does get shout killed. like, you know, traitor at the guy. Yeah, he does. He does shout traitor, um, oh. which is questionable. There, this is one of the things about the colonial pilots is they're not all on the same side because they don't know about each other. Mm-hmm. This is not. We'll find out that the plot is coordinated, but it's not, they've not been told. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't even know each other were going to exist. Mm-hmm. They thought they would be alone. Uh, and it turns out there are five of them. So that's fun. Yeah, um, and we... um, And this is where we cut to... Well, real quick, we do, gu- we do cut to Hiro actually destroying the target. It's very quick. But is that before? Yeah, it is before. Just before. Because it, it literally, it's just Hiro shooting his cannon at the base once. Oh, okay. And then him laughing maniacally. He does laugh maniacally, that's true. Which, I can kind of understand. He's finally getting to do the thing he has that's been true. wanting that's and true. trying to do. Well, that he he wanted to do when he got <laughs> to Earth. Anyone who's ever played Titanfall running around just desperately trying to, to build their meter up to get their mech again understands Hiro Yui's frustration. Yeah, uh, for sure. And that's when we cut to the gayest jam session. We do, in fact, cut to the gayest jam session, and it's great. It's wonderful. Um, in, in stark, this is why I thought this was after their first. This is in stark contrast to Hiro Yui and Duo Maxwell, mm-hmm. who are basically fighting. Uh, Ketra and Troa are. K- Ketra is playing the violin. Troa goes and pulls out a flute. From, like, a cabinet of instruments. Yeah, from, like... Yeah, Ketra just brought a cabinet of instruments. Unclear, unclear if Ketra plays them all, or if he was just like, I might make friends who play well, instruments. May, may, maybe the Magwanak Corps plays the other ones. Maybe, maybe. Um, but, but definitely he goes and grabs a flute, and they, they have... It's very reminiscent of Master and Commander, uh, where the captain and the doctor play music together. Uh, it's fun. Um, it's nice. Uh, mm-hmm. They're becoming friends is an interesting like dynamic for what we'll get at the end of this scene. Um, but they're getting along in a way that Duo mm-hmm. and Hero are not. They also don't. Neither of them say anything in this. Scene. No, no. There's there's very little dialogue. There's a a bit of a line from um, the Magonot. The Corps lead, he's the leader of the Magonot Corps, right? Yeah. Well, like Catcher's technically later, but uh, uh, the guy who actually does the day to day, the EXO of the yeah, Mob his Renaud his Corps. um yeah yeah like EXO. Uh it's not really a boat, but well you know whatever his yeah. second in command. Um, he but yeah, there's a bit of a like can we because they're um Troa Troa yes, yes. Troa Barton um, yeah Troa um, name's but, Troa Barton by the way yeah sure uh, Tro- Troa is leaving. And they're like, can can we trust him? Won't, couldn't he tell everyone about us? And Ketra's like, nah, he wouldn't do that. He's a bro. He he's wouldn't bro. do that. Which is he's very like, one, he's another Gundam pilot. Who would he tell? Um, but also, like, I don't know, we made the joke that, like, well, this is this is the 90s, so he can't tell anyone because then people would find out that he's gay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um... Right. But, yeah, there's also the, the leader of the Magonaut Corps is, like, 
it's so weird to have found another pilot who is as good in a mech as Ketra. Uh, well, and also, they, they remark in the hangar, because Magonaut Corps is doing repairs on both the suits. Yes. Um, and they remark that the suits are scarily similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, wow, they're so similar. It's so easy to fix them both. Because, yeah, because uh, yeah, one of them remarks upon repairing Troa's suit. Right. Yeah, it should be up and ready in no time. It's it's basically the same suit, so it'll be right. easy. It, it's ju- it, like we already know how to repair it. Yeah, which is funny, because visually and armament-wise, they're really not that similar. Well, if you actually look at the Gundam, yeah, designs, their sort of chassis are the same. Yeah, they have the kinda. same base frame. Well, you say that, but like Heavy Arms has machine guns inside its chest. Yeah, that's in a the way part that others that, don't. Well, and and notably, yeah, that's why it's it's weird that they say that specifically about Heavy Arms. It's not yeah. so weird when you look at the other Max. Yeah, Heavy Arms is much different from the others. Uh, is really what it yeah. is. Um, um well, because most most of the other ones have like a rounded chest plate, and he doesn't right. because it has to open he, up. He and, has his chest machine guns, yeah. but also again, presumably whatever is in that space and the other mechs is, is different has yeah, to go well, somewhere cause, else because there's feed because there's whatever ammo feed mechanisms yeah whatever bins for the ammo you know like power core or yeah something right you know um well and then there's all the missiles and we right. haven't even gotten well, and, and, and similarly i mean the other one that's really different is wing gundam because it transforms into a plane yeah which, which cannot other, possibly yeah. be the same as the no. others yeah um, um it, it's yeah, but they're the same suit. They're the same suit, definitely. <laughs> um, they're all made of Gundanium. Trail count up one. Yeah. Is jam session, and then we get to Noin getting dragged back to base. Essentially, yeah. They recover her mech. Zex comes and gets her out of her like cockpit in a mm-hmm. way that's weirdly romantic ah and he literally yeah he he also says and with a visible amount of like well not visible but almost visible amount of relief in his voice i'm just glad you're alive right (laughs) unlike the rest of our pilots implied (laughs) ah but yeah well well, because and notably we did find out that both of them were number one and two at the military yeah yeah yeah. um again they know each other Mm -hmm. um and 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 she's clearly into him in a way that he might be into her he's not he doesn't like reject her right he, he never reject, tells he never her reciprocates off. either he just doesn't but it, it's unclear whether that's because he doesn't like her or because he just isn't that kind of person well, right not just that kind of person but also like Perhaps a bit of military professionalism. Yeah, also there they're too. on duty in uniform under arms. Maybe now's not the time, Noin. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, it's okay. And I love Noin. Doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Noin, Noin is actually pretty great. Um, and then we cut to Wu Fei scaring off a pack of well, hyenas. He, at, he walks up, and these hyenas surround him. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, it's some kind of weird Snow White moment. He's gonna like control the hyenas. What a weird thing!" And then no, he just yells at them, and they run away. Yeah, he, he goes, "You weaklings!" Yeah, he yells, "You weaklings!" at a bunch of hyenas, and they run away. And then he exposits that he gets very upset when he like. Fights inferior opponents, which again, given his comments about Noin earlier, is just horribly sexist. Uh, um, and then he shouts dramatically at the sky. He sure does, which again would be fine if not for the rest of it. He, he's gonna uh, do that a lot. I think he actually shouts at the sky more than any other. He's Gundam a sky character. shouter. I, I I can't blame him for that. It's cathartic. Yeah, uh, but it, the thing he is. needs catharsis for is stupid. Uh um. Th- yeah. So, uh, that wraps up that episode. Real <laughs> quick, I'll get to um Noin's voice actress, which is Saffron Henderson. Uh, she's done uh voices for World Trigger. Uh, she's actually the voice of the trigger mechanism, like that yeah. automated AI voice for that. And Yotaro Rindo, she was Shenhua in Black Lagoon and Sawyer the Cleaner. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, and then she was in My Little Pony as Teddy Safari and Auntie Lofty. I, my horse knowledge is limited. But what's really interesting is she also was in uh, Ghost in the Shell as the Tachikoma voice. Oh, that's why I like her so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she was also Light's mom in Death Note. Uh, 
she was Kazuko Yoshiyama from The Girl Who Leapt from Leapt Through Time. Uh, this is also a very recognizable voice. She's also in Naruto. She is Kuranai. Um, she was in Zatch Bell as Sherry. She was in X Men Evolution. Okay. As Callisto. Sure. This is one of the honestly one of the better animated adaptations of X Men. Yeah. Like. Um, all things considered. All things considered. Uh, she is also in Vision of Escaflowne as Aria and also as Yukari Uchida. Um, she was Son Gohan and Son Goku in DBZ. Well, DBZ yes. and, D- and Dragon Ball. She yeah. was Son, Son Goku. Which is which is one of those little fun facts that people tell you about the by the way, Goku's voiced by a woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's pretty common. I mean, it's, yeah. it's common both, pretty much anywhere with voice actors that women do tend to voice child characters. Yes. Of regardless of gender really mm-hmm. just because they can it's hit those higher, higher high, pitches high pitch. yeah. yeah it's just um yeah and with that we'll uh we go into episode five and we, sure and this is this, this is, is an this is the expedition yeah. episode it's, yeah oh this episode there's a lot different. that gets dumped on you in this episode information wise <laughs> we'll also meet our second character who looks evil yeah <laughs> looks evil <laughs> And he's not. It's the weirdest part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he sure looks like it. Yeah. Um. So we go to the spaceport. Is where we start. Yes. With uh, Relina and Lady Un both boarding the same shuttle. Mm-hmm. That is now launching into space. Oh, I think we skipped over the fact that in the bubble bath scene, Trey's ordered Lady Un oh, to we did deal that. with the ambassador. Like, and she. In- in a very like, will will no one rid me of this meddlesome ambassador? And he has one subordinate stand. It's not even yeah. like all my subordinates are standing here, and one of them might do it. There is one person standing yeah, there, and then and she he's says, like, in a very menacing way, "I'll deal with him." Yeah, and, and I will do it so quickly that I'll have time to have rose scented. Yeah, I'll liquid. have all of rose scented uh, perfume for your next bath. And he just. Lounges back. Yeah, which is yeah. like, sounds good. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. <sighs> yeah. Uh, um. So yeah, so they're both they th- these two have now boarded the shuttle, and she decides to be villainous and ominous with Vice Minister Dorlin, who just <sighs> no sells all of it. Yeah. Which. Again, he doesn't really no sell it. I mean, he's pretty hostile to her, right? Because she's like. I'm well, gonna ignore, I'm gonna go menacingly. Well, he ignores her at first, and then he 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 very calmly like just kind of keeps verbally shutting her down. Right. He's like, "Why would I have anything to say to a, a member of the specials?" Um, which, I mean, we don't really know why he's so hostile to them yet. Mm-hmm. We're gonna find out. Yes. But but that's not because the thing that he's been like engaged with and upset about is, is not the specials. Mm-hmm. It's had nothing to do with the specials. Uh, so that's fun. And then we cut back to the school with girls A through G. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Discussing Relina as as they do. Well, discussing the colonies. Yes. And how they, they, they're they in it's sad because well, they're in the space colonies, yeah. um, and don't sparkle. Yeah, it's, they like have very that. colonialist attitudes towards yeah. the colonies. Which yeah, is fair. I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing that they can be up amongst the stars, but not appreciate the sparkle. Oh, what? I'm so jealous of Relina. She gets to go up there. Mm-hmm. Um. um no, notably, these do these girls have names? They no, don't. Though. They don't. They're literally listed as like girl. It's a, a shame because they they A B C D G. And we're F this close to this show. We're this close to this show passing the Bechdel test. These characters just needed names. Uh, Very close. Because <laughs> they are, in fact, female characters discussing something that's not a man, but they don't have names, so it doesn't count. Mm-hmm. In, uh, in, in any other anime, they would have been named. They would have been named. But no. they're in a mecha anime, so no. they don't get and named. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we will ever pass the Bechdel test in this show. Because I don't think... Unless, like... Do you Noin and Lady Un ever have a conversation about something that isn't Zex? 
I don't think so. I don't think they have very much interaction just in general. I know they interact at least once. They do, but like, but, they, but it's like not very frequently. No, um, and that's the only, and uh, Relina doesn't really interact with either of them. Like, so no, I don't think we're gonna pass the Bechdel test. Well, Relina interacts with Lady Un quite a bit actually early on. It interacts with, but not like has conversation with. Not really. Yeah. Um. um so then we we uh. We cut to Hiro's room at the rich kid's school. Yeah, we sure do. And he, gets he has to go back there yeah, because he's burned his only friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's got he, he's got a new target is basically just the yeah, it's literally just mechanic. him getting a new assignment. And then yep. cut to um, space again where they're landing now. Yep. At the colony. Do you know, we don't talk about this. Their spaceships fly really fast. They do. Really. Like, like super luminal we have to assume mm -hmm. right that's never discussed but like yeah. they got to the colonies in like a couple hours hours and the colonies are like at as they keep talking about lagrange points so i assume they mean the sun well no it's unclear where the colonies are in space, but they're mm -hmm. they're out there. They're out there. Definitely out there. They're, they're not, not just sitting. They're in not Earth orbiting orbit. Earth. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in fact, I think at one point they're mentioned to be like out in the asteroid belt. I think. Um, or at least they'll be seen out that way. Yeah. Uh, the, but anyway, we get, so they one. We'll we'll be heading. There will be a lot more in space. There later. there should be like relativistic problems with this trip, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's. They're really fast. Yeah. Um, it's just never discussed. No, it's not. So then we, we, we cut to Rolina's hotel, essentially. Yeah. Um, and nothing the really... The embassy. One, one would presume there's an embassy. Yeah. Pr presumably the embassy. <laughs> Make the ambassador get a hotel. There, nothing really happens with Rolina here. She's just shown. Yeah, she just is. Um, As and then is we, frequently the case with Rolina, we cut to a conference room, yeah, where uh, Lady Un and a bunch of colony officials are like all sitting, starting like sitting down. They're at this. going into a meeting, yeah. And Lady Un is told like, "You don't have diplomatic credentials. You're not allowed to be here." Yeah, or well, you're not allowed in this meeting. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody can stop you from being on the colonies, which which is all, okay, because the opening presents it like there's a state of war between the colonies and Earth. And I mean, there functionally is because they sent the Gundams. But, like, Lady Un is a member of Earth's military and she walks around this colony. Like, nobody... They're not hostile, the, right? The, the status of, like, war between the colonies and... Yeah. and Earth is very nebulous. Right. Like, it's not very well explained at all. Yeah, because again, because in that other meeting they were discussing whether or not to send troops. But if we go by the opening, there's a bunch of troops actively oppressing the colonies. It's very weird. It's it's strange. It's um, again, I think we can assume that, that the opening is just incorrect. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that, that there is not a state of war. That they have occasionally done like crackdowns or whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, something like that. But but that what is shown in the opening of like literal war between them is not happening. Mm -hmm. Because again, <laughs> Lady Un would be shot at. Uh, she's in uniform. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's other Oz guys there also in uniform. Yes, yes, there are. Um, just chilling outside the embassy. But they don't even seem to go through any kind of security inspection, no. as evidenced by what's about to happen. Uh, yeah, because uh, then Lady Un's like, "Okay, fine, just you know, give me like me a transcript get... afterwards." Yeah. And the guy is basically like, "Yeah, they're public." <laughs> well, he doesn't say they're public. He just says, "Yeah." We'll, do well that. he says something like No, he just says, Yeah, we'll do that. I was the one who said that Okay. I, yeah. I, I, While we were watching sure. it, I, I did rem I, I um, remarked because they probably are. I mean they probably are, but but um, you know. But anyway, the the conference is discussing well, before the conference starts, she places down her compact. She <laughs> Oh it's you're underselling that. She it pushes some buttons on her compact. It starts blinking. She closes it, sets it down, and then 
evilly mutters to herself about how it will all <laughs> the end will come soon or should I say the beginning like <laughs> if anyone In overheard room, you yeah, well, well no she's there's no one else around oh no right because she's outside the door yeah, yeah she's like walked outside the door which I mean given the size of this explosive it's an explosive uh, that we'll see later I don't think this would have worked no I I think this would have been like an Operation Valkyrie. Type yes, thing. I, I, th- I think that this would have been a a failing to kill Hitler. Uh, right, that door would have absorbed the blast. And nothing would have happened. Um, well, a, a few of the guys sitting closer would have probably gotten injured by injured, shrapnel. Injured, probably, but not um, not killed. No, definitely not killed. And the guys uh, at the other end, of, and we see Dorland sitting like away from the door. Right. So, uh, and that's also as, as we're target. about to see. Thank you, Relina Torlin, for improving Oz's plan. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, because so what happens then is Relina comes up and says, hey, I'm going to go do some shopping. And yeah, the guy's I'm like, gonna... hey, we'll send an escort with you. Oh, no need no, for that. No, no need. I'm Relina, and even people who threaten to kill me don't well, threaten me. She, well, she she says that, oh, well, the colonies are so much more peaceful than Earth. Which is also very colonialist. Yeah. To be honest, again, characterizing a group of people like the voice of someone, like I said when we were watching, the voice of someone who's only been in like the Magnificent Mile of a city. Because yeah. yeah, if you if you go to Detroit and right. you go to like the Magnificent Mile where it's all sports arenas and the big hotels yeah. and like the like the MGM Grand and stuff like that, yeah, you might say, oh, Detroit's a very nice, peaceful city. And then you go to places like Highland Park or the rest of Eight Mile. And you find out that's not really the case. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, having having lived in in Atlanta, uh, yeah, no, Atlanta's a very nice city, but there are parts of it that are not. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't call I it a peaceful wonderful. city. Mm, no, well, uh, uh, parts I mean, again, parts again. Of it, you yeah. know, well, I wouldn't call it an overly violent city. No, either, it's not but, Baltimore. But I wouldn't call it like more peaceful than everywhere else, right? No. Um, but yeah, it, she thinks the colonies are people. No. One could argue these are space colonies, which mm-hmm. means they don't probably really have like a slum, right? right. Because when you build your space station, you just don't don't build a slum, no. uh, right? So, so there maybe is a, a little maybe bit more a of a bit. well, and you got to figure that a lot of a lot of the people are, you know, in high paying tech related positions right. to keep the colony from falling apart. Yeah, well, and. and one one imagines that when one goes to live in space, there's a little bit more collective unity of, well, if we start bitching about who has to do what, we all die in the void of space. Right, mm-hmm. right. But, the air has to keep well, flowing. The walls have to stay solid. In, in a similar fashion to, like, how ship crews, for the most part, yeah. try to avoid major conflicts because the sea is the enemy. Right, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. everyone out here, they seem peaceful because everyone's enemy is hard vacuum. Yes. Right? Uh, so, I, and I think, I think the, we don't really know what the population of the colonies no. is. They look kind of, they're these kind of ring structures. I, I forget the name of what you call one of those, like, ring habitats. Yeah. But they're a, they're a very specific kind of, like, it's like a ring world. Um, it doesn't go around the sun. It just kind of is a ring. It uses it, rotational gravity, definitely. It, it uses rotational gravity and you, like, put it on an angle so that the sun come... The, basically, it rotates around so that you get sunlight half the time mm-hmm. um, on onto your ring. Um, they're very clever. Uh, but one presumes that their populations are not super high. Uh, yeah. Which also, again, helps with yeah. Peace and crime mm-hmm. and, and everything oh, else. Yeah. Just having a low population who all know each other. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, and... Uh, it's probably a lot more white-collar crime that Melina doesn't see. Yeah. I bet everyone there is committing tax fraud. So then Melina notices the compact and goes, Oh, she must have forgotten this. Yeah, she forgot her compact. Let me go return it to her. And and then we cut to the conference itself. Yes. Where they're discussing how none of these guys are like like they're hearing all this like operation meteor stuff and they're like we have no idea what's going on with that like which is funny because i think ambassador darlin kind of knew more than these guys did he definitely did uh which is funny yeah um but 
well, I mean, I guess we'll find out why in a bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, they don't know what's going on. Why, why would Earth think that we did this? This is ridiculous. What do you mean we constructed the most advanced mobile suit of all time and then shot it at them? Yeah, That's five insane. of the, the most advanced mobile suits of all time and yeah. then shot them at them. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, and we don't know here, but this is just this one colony, mm-hmm. right? They're they're just speaking for themselves because the colonies don't talk to each other. We're gonna find out that out later in this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, they're just like, this is nuts. Why? Why yeah. are they? We, we need to like make them believe that we want peace because we do. Uh, so then uh, we cut down to uh, Lady Un smarming evilly. Ah, yes. Ten Uh, seconds left on my evil plan. Now, this is a little bit more reasonable mm -hmm. smarming. She's outside with her own guys. There's Mm -hmm. nobody else around. And she's sort of doing a final countdown. It's less dumb than... And then Relina runs up with the bomb. (laughs) With the bomb and goes, hey, you forgot this. And she goes, oh, shit. It, grabs it well, yeah, from she, her hand. She says idiot. She goes, you yeah. idiot. Which, I don't know. She No, she's not an idiot. She doesn't know it's a bomb. Why would you, what? It's, it's, it's so many things. It's not idiotic. But, I, uh, I, look, in the heat of the moment. Sure. And, and, like. You idiot. Don't you know my compact is a bomb? Well, she's going to find out real fast. Because yeah, Lady Un chucks it. Beautiful throw, by yeah, the way. Be- Lady Un has an Through arc. the windows to this conference room that are presumably not. Bulletproof, bulletproof or, or reinforced, or even like that weird mesh they put on school windows. Yeah, right. It just, but it just sails straight through, which also impressive throw to shatter a window and have it go through. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's not like a baseball or something, right? It's a compact. Well, it lands uh, like right next to the conference table. Like she got it, extra yardage. Yeah, on she, that too. she 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 does. She right. should, and she should have played outfield, and then it explodes and kills everyone in the room. She should, um, she had a great to, career to in, which as a professional soccer My player, immediate reaction was, if that was possible, why wasn't that the plan? That's a much better plan than your thing that probably wasn't going to work. <laughs> she was definitely in the Military Academy softball team. Anyway, oh, definitely. Um, um, but yeah, uh, the, everyone in this conference is, is killed. Well, most of them killed. are killed. Mostly killed. Um, uh, dead or dying. And then um, some dudes run in, and they're not uniformed. They're not like guards. They're not even wearing suits, half of them. They're wearing I mean, like jackets and stuff. Maybe that's just what colonial security is like. It's casual around here. Yeah. And the colonial security teams use Mac tens with the with the suppressor. Yeah, which, you know. They don't fire like Mac sure. tens, but they, they, they have them. They're space Mac tens. Sure. Maybe it's maybe it's less of a suppressor and more of a like, look, we have to fire in space, we'd like to reduce recoil because Which is uh, debatable with the Mac ten, because you're dumping yeah. twenty 45 ACP rounds. Right, I'm just saying if, if you if you second. if you fire, you know, a gun in zero gravity, right? Yeah. You're going to throw yourself off into space if you don't if you're not mm-hmm. careful. You know. Yeah. They space oh. my tent. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look. If if video games have taught me anything, it's that suppressors lower recoil and make your bullets go less fast, but reduce damage. Yeah. Well, that, that's because they make the bullets go less fast. Uh, apparently. That's how that works, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um so yeah. Uh, anyway, they have a shootout because Lady Un notably because Rolina immediately runs back inside because right her... and and she's like go kill the girl right because that girl just sh- saw me throw that bomb through that window she needs to die yeah uh, and the guards are like yep all right let's go well, the Oz guys are like yep yeah all right let's go get this this is also this is notably the episode where we kind of get our like. Payoff is a strong word, but payoff for why the intro and outro are so focused on Relina. Relina is the main character of this show. Uh, it just hasn't been apparent why for mm-hmm. five episodes. Yeah, well, so um, uh, Relina gets basically kidnapped. Kinda. Kinda. She gets um, well. She gets extracted. S- extracted with the colonial security team and her father, who is alive. Mm-hmm. He's dying. He's very dying, um, but but he's alive technically, and yeah. they extract them both. There's some gunfire. Nobody gets hit mm-hmm. because yeah. I mean, they're using Mac tens. Nobody gets hit. Uh, and yeah, and so then we cut after she gets put into the van. They cut to um, duos outer heaven once again, 
with Hawaiian shirt mechanic, who is an important character who He's will great. help us later. He is. Um, um, but yeah, he has acquired more parts for Duo. Duo's like, thanks for getting me the parts, and he says, as long as I get paid. Uh, and, and remarks that Duo is a great client. Yes, which, fair sure. enough. Then we cut to Ketra and Troa, as Troa is leaving. Yeah. Um, oh, is this where Troa leaves? We might have actually gotten Did we jump the gun on Troa leaving? I think we did. Okay. I thought Troa left much earlier. Okay, now Troa leaves. Well, Never cause, mind. Yeah, because it was Magwanak Corps commander last time was expressing doubts in Troa. Like, Look, in, internal monologuing. Whenever my brain com- combines scenes like this, just take it as read that these scenes probably should have been combined for the yeah. for the brevity no, oh, of the show. No, I agree. I agree. Well, <laughs> like, if only these scenes like, could cut, have been handled if together. If only they cut down on the been. intercutting that happens. Right. Because this easily could have been a scene in last episode at the end of Troa. Right. The it Troa could have just been Petra part segment. of that scene. It doesn't need to be here. Yeah. Um, but that scene happens. Um, yeah. Then we cut to a naval yard that Wu Fei is attacking. Mm-hmm. He sure is. And he had Attacks naval yard. I don't even think he says anything successfully. Yeah, and we cut to Hito, who is attacking a different military base. Right. Um, and like nearly loses. Yeah. Which is which is, man, for all this guy is bigged up. Ah, uh, he's not. Well, yeah. Or rather, he's about to attack this military base because then yeah. we cut to Zex and the tall geese. Oh yeah. And they're talking about how it's almost ready. Yeah. And they're just putting the helmet onto well, it. Well, it's almost ready. It's going to be, like, a couple more months. Well, I mean, they right. already have been saying, like, you know, it's it's going to be, like, yeah. a year. It's going to be They're like, it's, it's, it's much whatever. more advanced than we expected, and somehow that's going to let us uh, fix, fix it faster. Um, which I guess does scan with the other Gundams. They all seem very easy to repair. Mm-hmm. I guess that's... Maybe that's the main quality well, of we're, Gundanium. We're gonna They're just out, easy yeah, to fix. May, maybe, yeah. And, and who knows? Um, they're just better. Yeah. Well, they are just better. But they're, they're maybe maybe the superiority of these mechs is is less in their you know invincibility and high powered weapons, and more like the Sherman, where they're just Gundanium makes it really easy to take off the front plate and get to the front differential. Like, I mean, <laughs> maybe you know. Um, uh, and now, now you mentioned because this is the scene where we saw the head of the tall geese, yeah, right. And it looks um, like a Leo. It looks head. like a Leo head, and then it, it gets this like sort of helmet thing, helmet put over the Leo plate head, thing, like Roman style helmet yeah. face plate thing, which looks it, cool. But, oh, but yeah, yeah it, its cockpit is functionally like a Leo. Well, not, 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 not even cockpit. not cockpit. The heads are not the cockpits. They actually the cockpits yeah. are in the chest. Um, but the sensor suite, mm-hmm. I guess, because I think the sensors are it is, in the It head. is a sensor suite. Well, because yeah. we find it out, like, because, like, there's at least one point, I don't know if it's one of the Gundam pilots, or somebody fights while their mech is decapitated. Which is funny, because in this episode, I think, uh, this episode or last episode, we see, no, it's this episode, he dis- he destroys an enemy mech by killing it, by destroying its head. Right? Well, Maybe I'm the hero the, shoots the head off of a Leo well, and it, maybe, it dies. Maybe with the Leos, they don't because they're not as advanced. Because I think again, I think the, the mech that fights decapitated is like one of the Gundams or something. Right? Like that. Sure, sure, sure. Maybe they just have a more advanced backup sensor suite where yeah. the Leo is functionally taken out of the fight because its well, sensors it's, are gone. It's not like he shoots its head off and then it wanders around and can't fight. He shoots its head off and it slumps and falls over. They're smaller suits. Maybe a bit of the cockpit does get just into catches, the head on them. Catches the look. Most of the people when struck in this show explode. So. Yeah. You know, because the mechs are made of explodium when you can't make them of gundanium. There's um, a lot of stack pulling that happens. There's a gundanium. lot of stack pulling. Um, yeah, so basically we just kind of get a quick cut to all the Gundam pe- yeah. people in a row. We just, and we then... just cut through everybody. What What is everybody up to right now? It's very, you know... Well, notably, Hiro attacking the base, because... That does happen after... It kind of happens after Zex and Tall Geese because it, yes. it intercuts with... We well, keeps cutting back to them because when we cut back to... I don't know, you, you took notes. You keep yeah. track of what where we cut when. Yeah, so notably... Uh, cause, well, because it, 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 this part, it's weird because there's cuts... There's a lot of intercuts, which is why I didn't do all of them. Like Yeah. Because 
all of these like Gundam scenes are intercutting with Relina and her father and her yeah. father. So the actual important scene yeah. here is Relina and her father. Mm-hmm. The rest of this is very just cutting between action scenes yeah. and while the actual yeah. important scene happens, mm-hmm. which is Relina's father telling her that she's not his biological daughter. She is not Relina Dorlin. She is not Relina Dorlin. She is in a very stilted line delivery. Relina Peacecraft, the daughter of that Peacecraft family who was so well known for their commitment to peace. To total pacifism. Oh, God, I just, what a, I don't I don't like the way that line Which was delivered. Is presumably why they all got killed. One presumes. Um, but also, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, then we, after all the... And he tells after, her to beware yeah, of Oz. Yeah, tells her to beware of Oz. Which I guess means she's never going to watch the movie. Um, yeah. Um, so then we cut, after Zex and the Tall Geese, we cut back to Relina at the morgue. Is this the morgue? It's just a room that they've holed up in. Well, Because they talk about not going to the hospital. Well, that's true. She yells at them. She's like, my father could have been saved if you had taken him to the hospital. And and the guy is like, we can't go to the hospital because... And then gets cut off. We don't know why they can't go to the hospital. But they can't go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And... Um... Yeah, and, and her father is... They're saying this as they're draping the, like... Yeah, they're, like, draping a, a cloth over him. Yeah. Um, um, and then... And she mentions, like, if only, like, Hito were here. And that's when we get our... No, oh, not because no. she pulls a gun. Oh, right, she, she pulls she a gun. See, this guy has a, a, a pistol, right. like, tucked into the back of his pants. And she yeah. sees this. Like, dude, and, get a retention holster. Yeah, now. grabs it. Look, it's it. They're the colonies. They don't have that technology yet. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> it grabs it and and points it at the guy and is and is upset. And we get these kind of flashes of like her wanting to, because they're like you can't fight us. It's mm-hmm. suicide. And she's like, I don't care about dying. And, and she and we get flashbacks to all of the times that she wanted to die. Well, I guess. Well, all the not just all—it's all, it's all, all the times her life has been threatened is really by, what we get by Hero. Hero shows up in all of these. Specifically by Hero. Yeah. Um, well, she's defending Hero, one of them. Yeah. Um, well, uh, and it's well, she—it it seems like she's drawing some sort of inner strength and inspiration from her interactions with Hero. Again, this is leading to some character potential character growth I, that I hmm. don't think it's inspiration. I think it's more fatalism. Right. Sure. She he, she's told she's gonna die, yeah. and she flashes back to hero telling her he's gonna kill her, and then jumping in yeah. in front of duo's gun for hero. Yeah. So he, she cuts to hero like, yeah, saving his life, being threatened, jumping in front of bullets, basically just like uh, she even I think says like I don't care yeah, about she, my life. She yeah, she says she says she doesn't care if she dies. Yeah, it's just your threats have no hold on me because I want to do a thing and 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 I don't care if I die trying like, to do it. And she says something along the lines of like I'm going to be just like Hito or whatever. Yeah, this is where she says like I'm going to be just like Hero and then the guy who would be the villain in in just any other show uh yeah, he's shows got like up. A, and is like, did you say hero? Do you mean hero Yui? Uh, um, and this is Doctor J, not to be confused with, uh, like, some would argue the original dunk artist. Yes, in, in NBA uh, lore. But but yeah, he has like the first thing we see is he has these like, not mechanical legs, but like mechanically braced legs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we scroll up. He's this kind of. Mad scientist. Mad, very mad scientist. With this weird, like, three-pronged clicky claw for a hand. Yeah, like, he has that, this weird prosthetic. That he constantly... Cl- it doesn't look effective for anything. No. Like, you couldn't pick anything up with it. You, like, because it, it, it has these three, like, articulated appendages, right? But then there's, like, a flat plate on the end of each one. Um... That makes it look incredibly sinister, but also, like, you couldn't pick any... They're not opposed to each other. You couldn't pick things up with them. It's He has a tripod. He has a tripod on the end of his hand, and it's not 
useful for anything. No. Uh, but he clicks it constantly. And it just makes him seem so evil. Yeah. Um, it, it is very much And then like, she's like, you know Hiro Yui? He's like, yes, come with me. Yes, and my, and, and I'm, my the evil scient- I'm the evil scientist who created Hiro Yui. Uh, yeah, well, because... Uh, and this is where it gets... Because um, this part intercuts. We get a lot more back and forth intercuts. Yes, here. this is this is cuz it's going to continue intercut continue intercutting with Hero's attack on the base. Yeah. So the the thing that they're trying to do here is they're trying to punctuate points made in the conversation with things that are happening on Earth. It doesn't come across well. It there's a way to do that that's good. Um this isn't it. No. Uh this is like like I don't know. This is done really well in some media, right? Where mm-hmm. someone will be like, you know. Well, a good example, honestly. And uh, yeah, it's actually pretty. Like you can draw a lot of parallels to this scene too. In John Wick, yes, when he's talking about when when uh, the Russian crime boss is talking about John Wick and how he's a man of focus, and right. it does that intercut, but yeah. they do a good job of. The- and it's only between two scenes. Which I guess this is too, but it's too it's, convoluted it's, scenes. It's too um, convoluted scenes, and and they cut too fast, and they don't. But they, well, they hold also on cut anything. to a flashback in the middle of it too. Yeah, which is also confusing. Because um, Hiro Yui is named after Colonial Che Guevara. Uh, yeah, he, he yeah. the hero of the colonies who united them all. Less militaristic than Che Guevara, yeah. but he's he, basically he got them all. It's it's not even necessarily that he united them against Earth. He united them with each other mm-hmm. and got them all to be one colonial state, basically. Mm-hmm. And then he was assassinated. And now the colonies don't talk to each other anymore because I guess just no one made friends during that time? Or something? Well, yeah, and... Right, we'll, we'll find out later that it's because... The Earth Alliance and later Oz. He's orchestrating this intentionally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it is. It is again. They seem to be able to fly wherever they want in record speed and communicate between them just fine. So it's it's entirely like apparently nobody in the colonies liked each other enough to want to call. Well. And- Part of, part of the reason that this scene doesn't work, to. even though it's intercutting between two scenes, is because important things are happening in both of the scenes that are being intercut yes. between. Because this is when Duo and Hiro face off. Right. Cause, yeah. Like they're about to fight, and Duo's down for a scrap. Yeah, they, they're... Well, so it's a, it's a little more... Because Hiro, like, gets sort of caught by an enemy, and Duo shows up and kills that enemy and saves him. Saves is questionable. No, that, that's not. He does specifically. Well, no, no, no. Because what happens is Hero's about to shoot that control tower with his beam cannon, and then that control tower gets shot by the Vulcans on Duo's. Yeah, but it's it's implied that he was doing him a favor there somehow. Well, no, it's not. Yeah, because they they bring it up later. No, 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 no. He he. The, the, that what they bring up later that favor he owes him has nothing to do with that. Uh... It's because he it's because he bailed him out of the situation at the naval base thing earlier, like two episodes ago. Uh, that, that's not how it read to me. Because um, he doesn't bail Hiro out. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but they... They, they, they end they up squ- facing off. They square off, right? Yeah. Because because Duo said that he stole his parts. Um, and Hiro's just a jerk. Uh, mm-hmm. And they square off. And, and then a mech sneaks up behind Duo, and, and this is where Hero shoot, shoots its head off, and, and kills the, it, and is like, classic, we're even. Like, the classic kind of scene where you got the two people squaring off, pointing guns at each other, and then he, one he, of them he shoots. fires, and you're like, oh, he's firing at Duo, and then no, it turns out he shot a guy behind Duo. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. That scene works really well when it's not intercut with the evil doctor well, telling Relina about... Well, and we find a bit about... more about Hiro, because Hiro has been trained basically from, like, 
you very young age yeah, to be well, an this assassin. Is, this is where we find out that the Gundam's mission on Earth is not to attack Earth. It's to take out all the Oz people. Mm-hmm. It's Oz specifically that they're at. Yeah, they are specifically targeting Oz members. This is why their attacks have seemed so weird and random. Is because they're not trying to defeat the Earth military. They're trying to take out the Illuminati, essentially. Um, who happened... Some are in positions in the, in the Earth government. Um... So it, it, well, you know, and you know, are tied into that weird thing with the specials and being right, like right, this right, weird exactly. pseudo military. Um, yeah, but so, but so they've yeah. been, uh, yeah, because really, not, and the alliance guys who've whole... gotten dropped are just kind of in the way. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're just they're just there, right? They're working for the bad guys. Um, mm-hmm. but so because yeah, there's also this whole discussion in here where Relina is like. How can you kill people to make peace? Uh, I believe, I believe uh, yeah. a certain uh, Yosef Vissarionovich Stalin has a quote on this. Uh, well, and you also know. We're, notably, Doctor J responds with, "Oh, we're only killing the evil. We're only people. killing the evil people," which is which is not the Stalin quote, but sure. Uh, yeah, he. Um, yeah, and this is where he explains that they're they're fighting Oz, and she's like, "Oh, Oz." And he's like, you've heard of them? And she's like, well, my dad told me to beware of them. And he's like, oh, well, okay, you know all about them then. And but no, that's not, no, <laughs> that's not what, no. <laughs> um, yeah, well, and then we, um, it is Yeah, very we get all this together. hero and duo are, like, chill now, I guess. Sort of, yeah. And then, sort of. Um, well, because Hero says, that's when Hero says, I, after he shoots the guy, he says, I'm paying back the favor. And then laughs maniacally again. Yeah. Which, um, okay, whatever. And um, then we cut back to Relina at the spaceport because Dr. J drops yeah, and they're off like, there. Yeah, these guys will get you back to Earth. It's just like, okay. <laughs> um, and it ends with Relina sleeping on the shuttle after another cut back to Hiro and Hiro yeah. real quick. Which, which, why they're sending her back to Earth? Literally, at no point does she, like, tell these people, by the way, I saw Lady Un throw the bomb into the room. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I guess, I mean, they know that anyway. They, yeah, they, they don't, they know, it they was, already know Lady Un is evil. Like, well, they're like, it's probably Oz. They yeah. know Oz was involved. Right, and they presumably know Lady Un is with Oz because they know they seem to know who all the Oz people are. Yeah. Um Yeah. Um and it just kinda I don't know, it just it drags on. There's so much exposition. Yeah. Uh and that ends it out, yeah. That's like, it, that's the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, she's going back to again, why she's going back to Earth. Like on her own too. It's just like, I guess cause she has school in the morning? Like <laughs> It's I, I don't like, know. It's certainly it's, not because she's safer on Earth. No, it's not because she's safer. It's not because there's something she needs to do on Earth. It's just like, again, well, I, yeah, my dad was just assassinated, but I have school in the morning, so I guess I better get back to the planet where all the people want to kill me. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, and that's uh, that's going to conclude episode three of this podcast. It sure is. We're one-fifth of the way. Yeah. Or yeah. one-tenth, my bad, sorry. One-tenth. One-tenth of the way through the show. Yeah, there are 49 fifth, episodes, yeah. we just finished episode five. Yep. All right. And with that, uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Yep, see you.